April is a big mother effing month, okay? She is not coming to play or he is not coming to play. Hello, my fellow spiritual badasses on the internet and welcome to your April 2023 horoscope for your rising sign. April is fucking eclipse season, okay? So we have a lot of energy, a lot of momentum that's going to start building in April. Things are going to start changing in April very quickly, very rapidly. We're going to have our first solar eclipse in Aries for like the first time in several, several years, which is going to give us a taste of what the Aries eclipses after the nodes move will be about. It's going to be our second new moon in Aries as well. And so it's just a really big deal. Like things are going to start changing and moving very, very quickly this month. And then we kind of end out the month with also a reflection period because Mercury will be going retrograde. So we have a lot happening this month. You do not want to miss your horoscope for this month. So apparently I am just allergic to consistency. <laughs> so the setup is a little different today. So if you notice a difference, that is why. So basically let's cut to the chase. Let's cut through the bullshit because it's airy season, baby. I'm going to go over each sign and what you can expect for April. So with that being said, timestamps are going to be linked down below along with anything else that you could want or possibly need from me, make sure that you're checking the description. And let's go ahead and get into your April 2023 horoscope. Alrighty, Aries, starting with you since it is your season, boo. I actually like love this month for you. Like I totally love this month for you. It is so badass. Seriously though, like this month is like gold. Like you have found the gold rush. Like it, it is happening. You have found the gold. Okay. Like I really, really love this month for you. This month is going to change you and your life and who you are as a person and motivate you in such big, bold, and beautiful ways. Like, I really, really love this for you, but the only downside to this is you are gonna be growing immensely in terms of yourself, your identity, who you are as a person, your healing, like where you're going in your life and you know how you are uh, like really facing a lot of like self-development type questions or self-development type themes but you're also gonna be having a shit ton of your energy go towards your home, family, and private life. So it really looks to me like this is more so of a month of you doing something behind the scenes. Like I keep seeing these quotes everywhere, like disappear for like, you know, a few months and come back and see how it goes basically. Like disappear and work on you, work on your life, work on your desires, like work on your health, yada, yada, yada. And then, you know, see, see how much your life changes. And that is exactly kind of the energy I'm seeing here for you. It's like you are going so hard in the paint <laughs> on yourself, like self-development, like identity, like who you are, who you want to be, who you're showing up as, like your own sense of confidence and worth, your own sense of worthiness in the world, your own sense of self-esteem and security within yourself. And you're doing a lot behind the scenes. You're working on a lot of personal matters, like really securing that foundation and going in and like laying the groundwork, laying the foundation for you to get to bigger things. So although this is more of like an internal time, it is a very like boom in your face explosion kind of energy that's really coming up in you where you're going to be feeling very confident and working through maybe a lot of like old issues and securities, things from your childhood, insecurities that you have with like, you know, yourself, your body, your identity, like your worthiness, you know what I mean? Like how you look, how you show up in the world, your behaviors or personality, like you're working through a lot of that so you can really like bring that to the world and express that in new ways. And so, yeah, so the, the first part of the month, we are going to start off April with Mars, your ruling planet in your fourth house of cancer, right? Like, so you are really doing some deep internal work. You're really like going within, there may be a lot of your energy going towards your home life, your family life, your personal life. Maybe there are some changes that need to happen that you've been knowing for a while. Maybe you're making some big decisions about like, you know, things that you need to disconnect from because Mars is gonna be trining Saturn those first few days of the month. And so, you know, maybe you're making big decisions about what you need to let go of, what you need to surrender to, what you need to detach from, what you need to distance yourself from, right? This could 
could also be a time where you're like, you know what, like I'm moving, I'm finally gonna go travel or I'm finally gonna move to this place I've been wanting to move for a while. And for some of you, it could be very far away. It could be out of your comfort zone. There could be a lot of unknown, but at the same time, it's like, you know that you need to do it, right? Like it's like, it's unknown, but at the same time, it's known. Like if that makes any sense at all, it's like you're, you're taking decisive action and you're making big decisive commitments that you know are going to better your sense of trust in yourself and better your like better your life in some way like better your quality of life like that's really another big key theme for april for you aries is like your quality of life your lifestyle like your needs your resources like you know like what you need to support you because we're also going to have a lot of transits happening in taurus your second house of money income resources you know your needs like what supports you your finances so some of those topics could also come up as well but on the fifth fifth or sixth depending on where you are in the world we're going to have a full moon in your opposite sign of libra which i'm not sure if i'm going to get to a video on um or not i really hope i can because that full moon looks really really cool but yeah, so this full moon in Libra is gonna happen in your seventh house of relationships. So it's gonna bring up a topic or a theme of relationships of other people in your life. And you know, seeing another side of yourself through other people or understanding how to compromise in some way, find the middle ground in some way. Like you're gonna be kind of getting rebalanced in terms of self and other in your life. And that's really what it's gonna be about while you're also like maybe shedding, purging, facing old insecurities within yourself that have held you back from being able to find that middle ground, connect, compromise, et cetera, with some of the relationships in your life or with your partner, business partner, et cetera. So it is gonna reveal some things to you uh, that help you rebalance that area of your life, especially in terms of relationships. And so that is, I'm really excited for that. And then around the 11th, uh, the sun is going to conjunct uh, Jupiter. And so this can be a really positive, beneficial time where you really start realizing like where you've been playing small in your life, where you need, where you've outgrown certain parts of yourself, outgrown certain versions of yourself, outgrown, you know, old ways of behaving, old ways of doing things and where you start to really see a bigger picture for yourself. And you may be feeling really gassed up. You may be feeling like really motivated, really inspired, like you may be seeing yourself from a higher perspective and seeing yourself in a new way which can be very healing and very beneficial at the same time so i'm really excited for that too for you and then also on the 11th venus is going to move into gemini your third house so you are going to have some you know social things happening at that point with venus moving into gemini in your third house you are going to be maybe wanting to go to certain events around you explore different areas around you like you know explore your environment a little bit more get out a little bit more or socialize a little bit more or maybe even like find a lot of pleasure a lot of uh desire in learning something new right or connecting with new people right uh that you know are around your environment in some way and so that's gonna start on the 11th and take place for the rest of the month and then on the 15th venus and gemini is going to square saturn and pisces so what this looks like to me is like right around the middle of the month you could find that some of these social events or some of these things that you're exploring in your environment like maybe you're going to a concert maybe you're going to this new coffee shop that opened up up the road or this new book club or something or whatever you know like maybe you're you're exploring different things in your environment that maybe you normally don't um or you're connecting with new people in your environment or learning new things but with venus squaring saturn this could be like oh you know like i i really should be actually like working on myself or i really should be kind of disconnected so there's kind of this push and pull between connecting versus disconnecting right like being off grid versus being on grid basically like being you know around and you know connecting with others and friendships etc and doing different things in your environment versus just getting away and detaching and distancing yourself and maybe healing or letting something go this could be an environment or friend as well that maybe you're detaching from uh too so that could be the case as well so then on the 19th this is where 
the 19th or 20th, depending on where you are in the world, this is where like the really big shit starts going down because we are going to have a solar eclipse in your sign, <laughs> Aries. And so we've already had a new moon in your sign at the end of March. Okay. So now we're going to have another new moon, but this new moon is going to be a solar eclipse. And so this is going to be a really big deal. So there's something else here that we need to learn uh, in terms of Aries energy, in terms of your your rising energy, your ascendant energy in your chart. So this is going to be a really big, I think, turning point, a new beginning for a new you to be reborn. There's going to be massive change that starts coming in, massive, like this massive new shift that starts coming in in terms of who you are, what you want, how you're going about that in the world, how you're expressing yourself, your identity, who you're showing up as, who you want to be, right? Your drive, motivation, et cetera. So it's like you're, you're, this is like a really, really big turning point for you in terms of who you are and where you're going. And it's giving you a taste of what's to come when the North Node moves into your sign here in a few months. So definitely pay attention around that time to see what comes up around the 19th or 20th and it could start building days before or days after so keep that in mind too and then on the 21st we're gonna have the sun um, entering into Taurus our second house so there is gonna be more of a, a focus or a spotlight that starts being kind of shined upon your finances resources etc even more and when the Sun enters Taurus it's going to square Pluto in your 11th house. So this could definitely be a time where you are kind of, again, like it's almost like you're seeing like the power that something has over other people, or you are seeing more in depth of an organization, an institution, a group of people, um, you know, like different companies or trends in society that you are kind of like, oh, I don't know if I want to be a part of that, right? or it's starting to show you something financially about those things as well, or starting to show you something resource-wise about those things or something. It's like, I, you know, this is something that I depend on, you know, that is resourceful for me. And there's maybe a trend or something going on socially, like we're on like a larger scale, you know, um, with technology maybe, or something like that, that is like threatening it in some way. Like, so that's one way I could see this playing out, but really all in all, it's like, I feel like you're seeing, you're having trouble kind of finding an individual approach to something that you usually rely on, whether it be resources, finances, support in some way, um, priorities, like whatever it is that your, your needs, um, you're having trouble finding the individuality in that in some way, where you, there could be some fears coming in from outside of you that, you know, you're having to face that are challenging uh, your normal approach to your finances, resources, etc. around that time. But all in all, I don't think it's anything too crazy that you need to worry about right now. Um, or even then, you know, I think it's just like you're going to be seeing something around that time. Something's going to be revealed to you on an intense level around that time, around the 21st. And then also Mercury is going to go retrograde in your second house. So this is like really going to start this kind of rethinking, reflecting process on your needs, your resources, your income. What's of value to you? Like, what do you put weight weight on, right? Like, what do you put stock in? Like, what is of value to you? What are your priorities? Like, and so you're really going to be thinking about like how you can bring more, how you can find more, you know, quality over quantity and in terms of your resources and in terms of your finances, in terms of you know, finding a more beautiful, pleasurable, abundant, fulfilling, comfortable, um, quality related way to, you know, live in this area of your life to support yourself in some way with your assets, priorities, etc. So that is what I'm seeing for you this month, Aries. Definitely let me know down below if any of this resonated, if you could see any of these things happening. I would really, really, really love to hear your feedback as always. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Taurus, so welcome to your horoscope for April 2023. This is going to relate for you most if you are a Taurus rising, aka ascendant. So let's go ahead and get into it. So Taurus, this month for you is a big month. It's a big month for everybody. <laughs> but for you, this is a big turning point in terms of 
things that you are doing behind the scenes, how you are really, really taking care of yourself behind the scenes, whether it is releasing old habits, old patterns, whether it is self-development, whether it is really like going on this inward journey to find yourself, to find your confidence, to find your belief in yourself, to find your potential, right? Because we, this Aries season, so we're going to have a lot of really big things happening in Aries, including an eclipse. Eclipse season is starting. And so this is like really showing you something that you're missing in your life. This is really kind of taking you behind the scenes, behind all of your, your physical day-to-day -day hustle of life, right? And showing you like, wait, like there's something missing, right? There's something missing in your life or there's something that needs to be chopped off or let go of or ended, you know, that maybe you've been fighting against or maybe you haven't wanted to accept, right? There's old patterns that need to go or there's like, you know, some kind of just getting away or detachment or distancing or surrender that needs to happen here, right? So this is a time that can really pull you out of your normal, ordinary day-to-day -day plans or day-to-day -day schedule or day-to-day, -day, you know, stuff that you usually do and have you kind of, you know, going away or detaching or distancing yourself from it in some way to really pull you in and to help you see like where you're not focused somewhere in your life or where something needs your focus somewhere in your life that maybe you've been putting off ignoring or procrastinating on or not wanting to do in some way and so this is a month that can be very very beneficial for you um and showing you like what you need to do the actions that you need to take to recover to rest to heal in some way right to get out of your ordinary way of thinking about something or your ordinary environments or your ordinary way of, of viewing things or your ordinary perspective and get back to like the basics in some way is kind of what I want to really say here with your astrology this month, Taurus. So anyway, um, but to get to the, the nitty gritty of it, uh, we start off the month with Mars in your third house in Cancer. So, you know, this is you really starting to kind of take action to do what you need to do to really emotionally connect or get reconnected in some way with the things of your, like with your environment or the things you need to learn about or the things that you need to do on like a day-to-day -day basis. And, but in the very beginning of the month, Mars is going to try and Saturn in your 11th house of other people and, you know, your social life, friends, groups, organizations, things like this. And so this is a good energy because it's like, it, I feel like it's giving you like some sense of determination to like really go after something or really take action on preserving something that you care a lot about. Like it's like the, this is kind of a month as well where you're you're really taking action on the things that you really care about and that matter to you that maybe you've been putting off or like neglecting in some way, right? And so it's like you have maybe some aspirations or some hopes or some big long-term visions or goals for yourself, but it's like how do you you know, like, what are you doing in your day-to-day -day environment and your day-to-day -day reality to, like, really act on those things, right? Like, what what needs to be done? Like, what tasks need to be done? What errands need to be ran in order for you to, you know, preserve these hopes, goals, wishes, aspirations, etc. Other than that, we also will have a full moon in Libra in the very beginning of April, uh, right around the 5th. Hopefully I wasn't saying March before. I'm like, I still like, I mean, we're, I'm still in March when I'm filming this, but I keep like thinking this is the beginning of March for some reason again. But yeah, so we have a full moon in Libra on the 5th and this is going to be in your sixth house. So again, it's really showing you what needs to be done in terms of your habits, in terms of your cycles, in terms of subconscious patterns that need to be released. And this full moon coming in is like, hey, you know, this is what needs to be balanced out in terms of your habits, your health, your work, your subconscious patterns, you know, self-sabotaging behaviors, all of this, like this is what needs to be balanced out between your kind of, you know, subconscious reality versus your actual reality, right? Like what, there, there's something here. And so it's really going to bring a spotlight to like habits, health, day-to-day -day routine, things like that, work. Uh, around the 5th. And then on the 11th, we're going to have the sun joining Jupiter in your 12th house, which, you know, you could start feeling this a few days before. So do keep that in mind. But this is going to be a massive, massive perspective shift, I think, for you. It's going to shine a massive light on certain, you know, 
certain subconscious patterns, behaviors, etc., that it's time to transcend, it's time to move away from, or it's time to see a new, see a new perspective on it, right? Like this could really broaden your perspective. This is gonna be really amazing for like self-development journeys, um, healing, anything to do with healing. This is like a really great time for it. Like, so I feel like if you're a Taurus rising, you could really be focused on uh, a lot of healing right now, going within, going on certain journeys. This could really take you on like a, a shamanic journey or um, have you traveling and, and, you know, seeing new perspectives, seeing new sides, right? Uh, you know, looking at things in a new way, like releasing old patterns, releasing old karmic shit, right? Like, so I really, really like this month for you in terms of like healing and moving beyond old things that have really been weighing you down in the background, right? This is kind of like really showing you like your background programming, right? Like your your subconscious programming and what's no longer working for you are causing some kind of conflict in your life and where that needs to be balanced out and where also you haven't like taken the initiative or taken the charge um, to balance these things out because you're scared of the conflict or the friction that it will cause to balance these things out, right? And so that's what I really feel like this first like half of April is really gonna be about for you, Taurus. So uh, then on the 11th as well, we're gonna have Venus, your ruling planet, out of your sign and entering into Gemini, uh, your second house. So there's going to be more of a focus for you on your resources and options in terms of your resources, income, money. This could be like, you know, you starting to desire new ways to make money or new, you know, like uh, new income streams or new skills to learn or, you know, you start desiring to learn more about money or finances or, you know, open your mind more in terms of that area. And so there could be like a desire that, that starts kind of uh, forming here because maybe, you know, there is something going on in terms of your career or your long-term goals or achievements that you want out of life that's really like motivating you to start, um, you know, like getting, getting a little bit more interested in terms of your money and finances and resources and things like that. And so uh, that could definitely happen. Uh, around the 11th and moving forward for the rest of the month. So then on the 15th though, Venus in your second is going to square Saturn in your 11th. So this could kind of be uh, a little bit of a struggle here in terms of, you know, marketing or uh, other people in some way or trends somehow affecting like your, your options in terms of your money, finances, and whatever desires you have here in some way. So you do wanna watch out for that around the 15th. And then on the 19th uh, or 20th, depending on where you are in the world, we're going to have the solar eclipse. Eclipse season is finally going to start and it's going to be in the sign of Aries, okay? So this is gonna be a really big deal. Also in your 12th house, okay? Which is kind of the house of, you know, things that are a little bit more hidden from us usually, things that are subconscious, things that are a little bit, that are a little bit removed or going on in the background, but things that we need to face or deal with. It's things that can take us out of our normal, ordinary lives in some way. And so with this solar eclipse happening here, you could definitely find that um, there's a huge turning point in terms of subconscious programming, you know, a lot of this inner healing, self-development, pattern cycle work or focus that's been happening here. It's like, this solar eclipse comes in and it's like, we're resetting it. Like we're resetting the hard drive, right? Like we're, re we're resetting the subconscious hard drive in some way. And you know, the ruler of this solar eclipse is gonna be Mars in your third house in Cancer. And so, you know, you could see things playing out there as well, where, you know, maybe this has something to do with your environment. Maybe this has something to do with, you know, uh, different things going on around you in your day-to-day -day life, people, places, and things around you, learning something new or, uh, you know, a creative hobby or passion or skill that you're working on, something like that. Or you're maybe revisiting certain skills and things that you already have, you know, like intuitive skills or something like that, that you already have that maybe you got away from for a little bit. So that's gonna be really, really interesting. And then on the 21st, the sun is going to enter your sign, Taurus, and it's gonna square Pluto when it does. So this is gonna be a very powerful uh, start to Taurus season, your season. So the sun's gonna enter your sign, major rebirth kind of happening here, but also this kind of intensity or this feeling of like facing 
maybe a power dynamic or certain fears in terms of your career and your lifelong goals, your lifelong achievements and the path or the, you know, the path that you're going down or the, the things that you want to do with your life and in the world, there could be some fears that start coming up here for you to face, right? Um, in terms of, you know, do you feel like you can do it? Do you feel worthy? Do, are you scared to be seen? You know, like different things like this could, could come up right around the 21st of April. So then also on the 21st of April, last but not least, we're going to have Mercury go retrograde in your sign, Taurus. So this is where you really start reflecting and rethinking a lot about who you are, your identity, where you're going in the world, you know, how you express yourself are, you know, like it, it's going to help you get reconnected to who you are. Because after going through all this 12th house change with the eclipse and flushing things out and like completely just resetting your your subconscious hard drive and working on these old patterns and facing all these old things, it's like a new you is definitely uh, going to be reborn. So we're going to have to do some reassessment on the identity and who we are as people and and how we want to show up in the world now, like who like who we want to be now, like who we are and, and kind of recreate ourselves. And so I think that that's what's going to be starting around April 21st for you. And so those are the really big transits that I have my eyes on for April Taurus. Hopefully this related to you. Let me know down below. Feel free to come back and watch this at any time throughout the month. If you ever like, you know, need to get a little reminder of what the fuck is happening. <laughs> uh, thank you guys so, so much. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Gemini, welcome to your April 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. So for you, Gemini, this month of April looks like you are definitely making a lot of, you know, potential changes or looking at a lot of new possibilities in terms of collaborations, marketing other people, and also how that can maybe generate to money, income, you know, resources, etc. So it really looks like this is like a more social time for you where you're really focused on your you know, kind of social goals and aspirations and hopes for where you're going and how that can equate to some actual like, you know, assets, money, income, things like that. So, you know, it could also be a time where you're really business focused, like, you know, you're, or you're focused on reaching more people with something that you're doing or connecting with more people that share the same priorities or same values or like-minded people in some way. And so it really does seem like it's a very expansive month for you, but it's also a month that is going to have you really, uh, you know, seeing new versions of yourself and stepping into new versions of yourself and who you desire to be. While also towards the end of the month with this Mercury retrograde happening in your 12th, you are going to also start reflecting and feeling a little bit more called to go inward and actually like enjoy life more and maybe get away from all the the social atmosphere of it so we do have a lot of different polarity happening this month where the first part of the month you know first half of the month you may be feeling very social very out there trying to get things going trying to get you know come up with different you know collaborations or opportunities or inspire others in some way or lead others in some way or you know go after certain goals and ambitions that you have in the world and then the second part of the month you're more so like i just want to get away and go on vacation and like run in a field somewhere and enjoy my life you know like so there's definitely uh, a little bit of polarity going on this month for you so let's talk about it so the first part of this month we start off this month with mars finally out of your sign gemini and into your second house of cancer so you have really had to learn the last several months now since like august of last year how to really start incorporating more mars qualities in who you are your identity how to speak up for yourself how to assert yourself how to deal with conflict and friction how to be decisive and assertive and that can be very difficult for you as a gemini rising right like you are mutable air so you're, you like to consider all options and be open-minded and allow information and thoughts and things to change. And so, but Mars is really pushing you and putting a lot of pressure on you to like make up your mind and, you know, come at it in different ways and, and be decisive about it. But now Mars is finally in your second house of cancer, really having you focus on your needs, right? Like what are your needs? What do you need? What's going to make you feel safe? What's going to make you feel secure? You know, income, priorities, 
resources, assets, money, et cetera. And so these are some of the things that you could really be putting some more of your energy towards on or that you could be very motivated about right now. Um, and so as we start off the month, Mars in your second is gonna try and Saturn uh, in your 10th. And so this is definitely going to be a really great energy for endurance and kind of really working towards a bigger picture financially, really working towards a bigger vision with your career goals, with your career achievements, with your with some kind of long lasting goal. It's like you're working towards some kind of long lasting goal that you feel very connected to or very intuitively drawn by or that makes you feel safe and secure in some way, right? Like how can you nurture this this long-term vision of yours, right? And in actual practical ways and, and that becomes more of a priority, especially in terms of, you know, having it create reliable, safe resources for you. So that is something I really see kind of starting out the month of April. And then on the fifth, we're gonna have, fifth or sixth, depending on where you are in the world, we're gonna have a Libra full moon happening uh, in your fifth house. Um, so this is definitely going to be a time that's going to kind of rebalance your life in some way, especially when it comes to your love, passions, interests, like the things that really get your desire going, the things that really get your heart going, where you're just like, yes, like this is what I love to do. Um, so it's going to spark that for you. It could also bring up relationships, love, romance, dating as well. Uh, where, you know, something there needs to be rebalanced out. It's like you've been so focused on being a go-getter, going after your goals, going after your hopes, going after your ambitions, aspirations, dealing with other people, leading other people, uh, being the leader in some way. Um, and so now it's kind of like the that first, you know, week, you're a little bit more focused on, okay, like, how can I somehow integrate the things that I love into this or the people I love into this or my children or the people I'm dating or the ro more romance, more fun, like more class in some way, right? Like it's going to be kind of like a rebalancing um, around the fifth. So kind of watch out for that. And then on the 11th, we're going to have the sun coming into its conjunction with Jupiter in your 11th. So this is going to be really, really amazing. This could bring in that opportunity or that success that you've been going after in terms of this social atmosphere of your life, this social, you know, kind of section of your life where you've been like looking for opportunities in terms of collaboration or marketing or other people, like-minded people for something like this could be a really big opportunity that comes in or where you've been going after your kind of aspirations and things like that. This is going to like be a very benefic energy that's coming in around the 11th. That's going to show you a higher perspective and really bring in a lot of opportunity, I think. So watch out for that. And then on the 11th as well, Venus, uh, is going to enter your sign. So this is also really beautiful and kind of shows like there's a really positive energy coming in for you around the 11th Gemini where you're going to start really focusing more on what you love, your desires. And I think that that Libra full moon kind of is the start of it. It's the spark of it. Like, you know, where's your heart? What actually feels good to you? Um, what feeds your heart? What feeds your soul? Um, you know, where can you add more love, desire, romance, play, class, etc., into your life. And Venus now entering your sign on the 11th is like, okay, like I want to change my style or I want to do something different or I'm like interested in this now or this is going to be more fun to me. It's like it's bringing out that like fun, playful, like light uh, beauty kind of energy in you, right? Like, so I really like that for you. The Around the 11th, maybe a few days before, a few days after, that time period is just really beneficial. So then on the 15th, Venus and your sign is going to square Saturn. So this is going to bring in a little bit more of a difficult energy, um, potentially, uh, in terms of, you know, the things that you're wanting to do for you or that feel good to you versus your long-term goals, your career, authority figures, bosses, you know, um, restrictions or kind of setbacks or delays within your career, or within your goals. And so it's kind of like, oh, I want to go do this thing for me or I want to go shopping and like, you know, just change my wardrobe and change my style and all of that. But, uh, you know, like now I have this responsibility in terms of my goals or um, is that adding to my bigger vision or maybe a boss tells me, 
you know, like maybe you get into it, maybe a boss is kind of restriction, restricting what you want or you feel like in some way, something larger than you feels to be kind of setting you back or restricting what you actually want. So it's nothing too crazy, um, but it is something that's happening right around the 15th. So just kind of watch out for it, see what happens. And then on the 19th, we're gonna have the solar eclipse in Aries. Could be the 19th or the 20th, depending on where you are. We are gonna have the solar eclipse in Aries. So this is gonna be a really big deal. This is a solar eclipse. Eclipse season is starting. So this solar eclipse happening in your 11th house is definitely gonna be a massive new beginning and a massive turning point, massive lessons being learned in terms of your 11th house. Again, social, so your social house, social groups, charities, organizations, marketing, you know, different groups of people that share a common goal or a common priority, common value, like-minded people, your aspirations, your hopes, you know, your ambitions, the things that you're kind of building towards collectively in some way. Um, so this could be, you know, a, a, a massive turning point, a massive new beginning that starts here around this time where you're like, oh my gosh, like, this is the kind of business I want to start, or this is how I can reach more people, or this, you know, whatever it is, right? That's going to be really interesting. And I think like, you know, if any of this is relating so far, Gemini, I really feel like this is a month where you're like that Libra full moon coming in in the beginning of the month is like you getting clear on your message again and how to deliver that to the world and who all is going to resonate with that, right? Like you getting clear on your passion, where your heart is, you know, what you desire, what you want, and how to deliver that to other people or bring other people in or collaborate with other people on this vision that you have, right? So that's kind of what I'm seeing for that. And then on the 21st, the sun is going to move into your 12th house. Um, and this is where everything's gonna shift a little bit. This is where it's gonna go a little bit from like ambitions and collaborations and you know, social, the social life and your worldly you know, stuff, collective stuff that you're wanting to do or that you're in charge of or that you're trying to get somewhere with to more of a relaxed, like resting, uh, going within, getting away, you know, kind of energy. So this would be the perfect energy to go on a retreat, go on a, go, go to a spa, you know, like go rest and enjoy yourself and feel abundant in that in some way. Like just go feel good somewhere for a little bit. That's basically what this energy is. Like you have Taurus in your 12th house, right? Like this is a beautiful energy to have in the 12th house, right? And the ruler of that is in your first house. So this is gonna be a time where <clears throat> you are maybe detaching or feeling the need or the desire to get away, go on vacation, go enjoy yourself, go feel good somewhere for the sake of yourself, right? Like to really feed your own self, to really feel um, better about who you are, right? Like it's gonna make you feel better about who you are. So this could be like a lone trip that you're going on or maybe even a trip that you're going on with someone that you're dating. Um, either way, it's a, a really beautiful energy. It's a really beautiful time for you to get away and go do something that, you know, gives you more stability, that makes you feel more stable and fulfilled internally, right? That like feeds, like that, that fulfills your soul on like a, a subconscious level or behind the scenes level in some way. So, and then also we're going to have Mercury going retrograding, uh, or going retrograde, sorry, on the 21st as well. And so and in Taurus as well. So this is definitely gonna be a time where you're gonna be like reflecting and going back and revisiting a lot of these 12th house Taurian themes that I've been talking about. So um, if you do travel or something, I will say this with Mercury retrograding in your 12th house, if you do travel, um, this could be, you just wanna be careful because there may be details or delays that kind of happen, setbacks, things like that. It's nothing too crazy. Um, and if you're going somewhere you've been before, that's a good thing. Like that can also be symbolized with a Mercury retrograde. So you're, you don't have to worry too much. Um, but yeah, Mercury and Venus are going to be mutual. Like they, like Venus rules your 12th, Mercury rules your first. So they are going to be working together. Um, and you know, it's definitely going to be about you kind of you like refreshing your identity, like getting solid about who you are again and feeling good about yourself and doing things that you love, that you want to do, that take care of you, like self-care all the way, baby. Like, so that is what I'm seeing for you for April, Gemini. Let me know down below if you could see these things happening, if they are relating already. I would really, really love to know how did your March go. Let me know and I will see you guys in the next one.
Alrighty, Cancer Risings, baby. Let's get into your April 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. So April is a month that is really, really shifting things, okay? Like it is it is a big shift. It's going to start off very fast, bold, and uh, like full of ambition. And then it's going to slow down as we get to the end of it, right? So you're really going to have like a lot of focus going towards your career, your long-term goals, your future, your ambitions, you know, the things that you want in the world and really stepping up into this more like leadership role in your life in terms of work, career, in terms of, you know, maybe even being like an authority in some way or um, in terms of your goals, your long term achievements. Like this is a month that's really like calling you to like step up and step into that like leadership energy to step into your potential. It's going to be a month where you are really focused on a lot uh, in terms of your career, your future, your goals, what you want to achieve in your life. Like you're seeing the bigger picture of what you desire out of life. You're seeing what your ambitions are, where you're going and how to get there, right? And so things are becoming very, very clear in that regard for you, but you're also going to start noticing um, a lot coming up in terms of your social life and in terms of like maybe, you know, your career or business or, you know, something like that, like how to market that, how to bring more people in, how to collaborate with other people, you know, and kind of create more of like a a social dynamic or like reaching new people in some way, um, creating more of this like, <clears throat> creating more of this like uh, collaboration between like-minded people for whatever it is that you're going after. So that could also come into play too, as you're trying to reach your goals, reach your aspirations, you know, things like that. So that is like the big theme for you this month, Cancer. But as we start off the month on the first, we start it off with Mars in your sign. So Mars moved into your sign, into your first house at the end of March. So we're starting it off with Mars in your sign. So this is definitely also showing you how to step up and showing you how to assert yourself more, but also protect your energy and protect, you know, your like have standards, have boundaries and not be afraid to assert them, right? But in the very beginning of the month, Mars is going to trine Saturn in your ninth house. And so this is definitely going to be a time where you are feeling very motivated towards long-term goals, especially in terms of education, travel, in terms of where you find meaning and purpose throughout your life, the bigger picture of your life, right? The higher perspective of your life, your faith, right? Your, your, what, whatever you have faith in, whatever, you know, spiritual discipline that you follow, whether it be religion or other beliefs, etc. And so you're really going to be feeling that energy. Like this energy is going to be really positive where you're going to be feeling like, wow, okay. Like I know what I need to do, or I know who I am, or I, I have this like newfound drive within me, fueling me that fuels me from this faith that I have or from this, um, the, these ambitions that I have to travel or to, you know, find this meaning and purpose in life, this journey I want to go on, you know, to some degree. And so that's kind of how we're starting off April. And then on the, around the fifth, we're going to have a Libra full moon in your fourth house. And so this is going to really reveal to you, um, something to do with, you know, finding the middle ground or compromising in terms of family, home, and private life. So because you are so future focused, because you are so focused on, you know, career and long-term goals and where you're going and, you know, your future and like, you know, just your ambition and, you know, like all this stuff is happening in terms of like the big picture of your life, like what your life, like where your life is headed, right? Um, this Libra full moon is coming in to be like, okay, well, you know, there's something here within the past, within your family, within your home life, within your private life that needs to be rebalanced out first, or that needs to be revealed or looked at or something. Right. And so this is going to be a time of kind of just rebalancing that area, because once your foundation is good, then you have even more energy to put towards all this career stuff, all this long-term goal stuff. Right. So, um, that's going to be happening around the fifth. And then on the 11th, we're going to have the sun coming into its conjunction with Jupiter in your 10th house in Aries. So this is going to be beautiful. This could be a, a new opportunity, a new vision, a, a higher perspective, like, you know, uh, some kind of success that happens for you in terms of your achievements, your goals, your career, 
you know, like a, a new position in terms of your career or where you're going in terms of your career or you're just your long-term goals in general, like what you want to do with your life, right? And so I really like this for you or like right around the 11th. And then on that time as well, um, on the 11th as well, Venus is going to move into Gemini, into your 12th house. So Mars has been moving through your 12th house since August uh, of last year, but now it's in your first, right? And it's caused a lot of change, a lot of different things, a lot of tension, conflict, turbulence to come up in terms of maybe mental health, self-sabotaging patterns, you know, old, uh, you know, just old shit that needed to be worked through, you know, feeling secluded, feeling isolated or feeling like, like not wanting to be around people as much. But Venus moving into your 12th house is going to really reconcile a lot of that stuff that Mars kind of kicked up. So it's going to harmonize a lot of it, any missing pieces. And so it could definitely be a time where, yes, you may feel a little bit intrigued, interested, or feel a little bit better doing things on your own or getting away uh, to some degree. Or you may like, you know, want to take a trip and go somewhere by yourself or go do something that you've been interested in by yourself, you know, like. Um, there, there could be a certain level of seclusion that comes back in, but it's wanted, right? Like it's, it's desired for some reason. And so I think it's also going to, you know, be about integration, like integration of certain things that, uh, have been in some way holding you back or, um, like that you in some way haven't been sure of or have been, you know, certain things that maybe are self-sabotaging, you know, um, it's going to also maybe have you looking at, uh, relationships, family issues, um, or even friendships that are kind of self-sabotaging in some way since Venus rules those uh, respective houses for you as well. So watch out for that from the 11th forward for the rest of the month. And then on the 15th, Venus is going to square Saturn. And so this is definitely going to be a time where, um, you know, there could be something that you're wanting to do, but in some way, it's, uh, you know, like you could be wanting to travel or you could be traveling. You could travel to go do something, but somehow there is some kind of uh, restriction that comes up or some kind of setback or delay or something like that with Venus in your 12th squaring Saturn in your ninth. OK, or there could be um, a lack of faith that comes up that you have to work through or integrate um, a belief system or, you know, a debate with someone else about a belief system you know, something like that or a learning pursuit that you're going on um, that brings up some form of difficulty or some form of like something that's a little bit more unfavored. So it's nothing too extreme or bad or anything. It's just going to be a little bit of tension or something that's a little bit unfavorable that gets brought up in terms of those areas I just named off. And so then on the 19th or 20th, depending on where you are, we're going to have a solar eclipse. So eclipse season is starting. We're going to have a solar eclipse in the sign of Aries in your 10th house of your long-term goals, achievements, career, etc. And this solar eclipse is going to be a major new beginning and turning point for you in this area of your life. And it's going to give you a taste of what's to come, you know, later this year when the North Node moves into your into your 10th house, <laughs> into this sign that the solar eclipse is happening in, which is Aries in your 10th house. This is going to be a massive new beginning for you, a massive shift for you in terms of career, your future direction, what you want to do with your life. Like things are going to start becoming uh, very vivid and very clear for you. You're going to start having a lot of clarity around where you're headed, what you're doing, where you're going, what you want, what you desire out of this life and how to move forward and take action on that. And so on the 21st, we're going to have the sun entering uh, Taurus, which is your 11th house. And we're also going to have Mercury going retrograde. And so when the sun enters Taurus towards the end of the month, it is going to be more of a slowdown period, but it's also going to be somewhat of a social period where you are going to be a lot more focused on social pursuits, social activities, things involving other people in some way, things involving group of pe groups of people or like-minded people that share the same value or goal in some way, how to connect with other people or how to collaborate with other people, um, how to bring other people into something that you're doing or reach more people in some way or just, you know, hopes and aspirations that you have. And then Mercury is going to retrograde here as well. So this could also be a time where you are reflecting, you know, on the people that are in your life or the people that you want in your life, um, the kind of people you want to hang around, the kind of groups and environments of people that you want to hang around. And, and um, <clears throat> also any marketing strategies, like, you know, if you are 
doing something like that, um, organizations, you know, things like that could also come up as well. And so that is what I'm seeing for you, Cancer, for the month of April 2023. Let me know down below if this resonated or if you could see a lot of these things happening in the month of April. I would really, really love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, my lovely fellow Leo Risings, welcome to your April 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing well. March was definitely a hell of a month. <laughs> like I said, very transformational. And so we are heading into April with a lot of newness, a lot of new energy, a lot of new insight, a lot of new clarity, a lot of deep, profound shifts that may have happened internally for us. And so I'm really actually excited for April. April does overall seem like a very positive month and a very positive kick in the right direction, okay? And so really, I think April for us is gonna be a lot about kind of overcoming a lot of issues in terms of how we look at ourselves and the belief that we have within ourselves, the belief that we have in our potential, the belief that we have in you know, taking action in the world and going after the things that we want in life and the faith that we have in that as well. And so I think that, you know, we're really going to be reflecting on a lot of themes in terms of like leadership and how we are able to step into a leadership role and any like limiting beliefs that we've been having about ourselves in terms of doing that in our lives. And the uh, second half of April is going to be very focused on career and long-term goals, long-term achievements, and the direction that we want to really go in our lives and what we actually want to do. And there's been a lot of confusion around that. We've seen a lot. We've gotten a lot of insight and clarity and, and visions about that, but it's like something has been really kind of holding us back or uh, has been confusing in some way about that. You know, with all this ninth house energy, we've had to do a lot of soul searching and figure out what it is that we really believe in. You know, if we believe in ourselves and our abilities to, you know, do the things that we want to do and go after the things that we want to do. And so this month in April, I think is going to start resolving a lot of that and be a massive, massive shift for us to start seeing things in a new light and start maybe going on a, a new journey of self, right? And I'm saying a lot of this because a lot of these transits through Aries, like Jupiter, Chiron, the sun that we're having um, are also going to be aspecting our ascendant, trining uh, our Chiron, you know, in our first, and then a lot of these Taurus, you know, fixed uh, sign transits we've been having have been opposing or squaring our ascendant. And so there's just been a lot of confusion about the direction we're going in and how much faith we have in ourselves to do what we really want to do in the world and, and how, you know, the belief within ourselves. And so, and that's something I've also noticed for me as a Leo rising as well. Uh, the last several months, <laughs> it's been something I've been noticing and working through and working on. And so anyways, we start off the month Leo with Mars in our 12th house. And I don't know about you, it could be because I have my south node in Cancer in the 12th, but I am loving this energy so far, even though Mars is technically in fall in Cancer. Um, it is really giving us, and I, and I said this last month in the March, March horoscope for Leo Risings, that towards the end of the month when Mars moved into Cancer, it was going to be a good idea to get hip to getting away for a little bit, going and healing yourself, going on a trip, going on a vacation, going on a retreat, getting into healing work, get, doing something for your internal world, getting away, detaching yourself from your normal everyday concerns and all of that. And 12th house does rule escapism, so this can happen in an unhealthy way too, so you do want to be careful of that. But I think that if, you know, you may find that you have more energy, more motivation, more drive to like go do something that your soul needs, like that you feel intuitively called to do. If you are feeling, like I know for me, um, since Mars has been transiting cancer, I wake up and I will have the intuitive urge to just go and just do something. Like go get lost in nature, you know, which is very kind of 12th house, you know, like go be in silence, go be with yourself, go do different things that like feed your soul in some way and that help you get away and like recenter yourself, right? Um, and this can also be healing, self-development, you know, any kind of healing work, any kind of energy work, um, any kind of movement, like expressing yourself emotionally behind the scenes 
through different practices, through movement, through, you know, screaming or punching something or running or dancing, you know, like whatever it is, yoga, like whatever it is, it's like something is calling us, something, our, our energy is right now like being pushed to rest and receive more and heal more and do things that are going to allow us to unblock ourselves um, subconsciously. Like whatever internal, subconscious, behind the scenes blocks that we have, our energy is like, we have the motivation to solve that now. We have the motivation to really get into that, to dive into that now deeply. And we can get a lot of work done on ourselves and feel super refreshed and super healed and so much better um, if we can do that. So really take care of yourself. Make sure you're getting enough sleep. Make sure that you're resting. Make sure that you are listening to your intuitive callings. They are important. Take action on them. Make sure that you are healing. The more that you dive into that and that you're on the same page as that, the better this transit's going to be. We still have a little little longer of Mars going through our 12th because if you don't, it can bring up internal and subconscious and behind the scenes conflict and friction within ourselves too. Uh, we can find that, you know, like maybe our energy levels start going down if we're pushing too hard. Um, we get sick or, you know, something happens and it, it calls us to take care of it. And now, you know, where we have to step away from other things that we were doing, um, you know, and so just try to be on the same page with this energy instead of fight against it, because if you fight against it, it's going to get worse. And so um, it's going to be a lot more stressful and difficult for you. So allow yourself to just go get lost in things that heal you in some way. Really, that's really what it's about. You may notice and start being able to pinpoint and break uh, old habits, bad habits, self-sabotaging behaviors and patterns, maybe an easy time to finally overcome those and move past those and, um, you know, kind of break off, break yourself off from those in some way. So for the first part of the month, we will have Mars in our uh, 12th house trining Saturn in our eighth house. And so, you know, this is a time where, you know, there could be some kind of, you know, something coming up in terms of finances or other people's money or deep transformational stuff that's going on and it's kind of like asking us to like have trust and so we have trust to be able to keep moving it's like giving us endurance in some way or maybe even giving us a level of support or security or stability in some way to be able to keep moving forward with some of these behind the scenes things that we're doing to help ourselves emotionally to help ourselves heal to do all that, like I said before. So on the fifth, we're going to have a Libra full moon. This is going to happen in our third house. So this is going to be a time where I've noticed for me a lot coming up in terms of the throat chakra and speaking our truth and, you know, really like speaking our opinions and not being scared to let them out, speaking our mind a little bit more um, and rebalancing our lives in some way in terms of the things that we want to say, the things that we want to express uh, in some way. And so that's something that we could definitely notice around that full moon in Libra on the 5th. Um, it could also be a time of taking short travels, hanging out with other people, you know, certain events or social activities with friends in nearby places. So on the 11th, the sun is going to conjunct Jupiter in our ninth house. And so I think this is going to be very exciting, could bring in a lot of opportunity, a lot of higher perspective, a lot of clarity, a lot of new perspective uh, in terms of, again, our belief systems how we see ourselves and where we're going in the world, what we're learning, the things that we want to learn about, educational pursuits, travel. Um, it could bring in a lot of opportunity and success and, you know, benefits here in terms of those areas of life. So really watch out for that on the 11th. I'm really excited to see kind of what that brings up. It could be a new mentor, new teacher, new guru. We could decide that we're going to mentor, you know, teach or be a guru or whatever <laughs> in some way. Like, so uh, definitely watch out for that on the 11th. Also on the 11th, Venus is going to move into the sign of Gemini. Um, and out of Taurus, out of our 10th house. So, you know, we've been having, you know, a lot going on in terms of our 10th house already, but Venus has been moving through our 10th house the last month and kind of showing us like the beauty and what's possible and what we really want and desire in terms of our career 
and long-term goals and you know things that we want in our life things that we want to achieve in our life that are going to bring us more quality more fulfillment more stability more security and so when venus moves into gemini on the 11th uh, we're definitely going to see uh, a lot coming up in terms of things that we desire or want or find pleasure in in terms of social groups social dynamics like connecting with other people more um, and how to connect with other people how to find or connect with like-minded people a little bit more focusing on hopes and aspirations so that's something that we're going to see from the 11th and until the rest of the month so on the 15th venus and gemini is also going to square saturn in the eighth house and so this could be a time where something that you know people that we're connecting with or like-minded people that we're connecting with um in some way is not necessarily it somehow has to do with certain restrictions or difficulty that we're dealing with financially um and they the two could not really be on the same page basically since it's a square so it's like you know there's something going on maybe financially or with other people's money um and that is how and somehow in conflict with you know some of these people or you know events or um groups of people or hopes or aspirations that we're wanting to connect with in some way and so watch out for that around the 15th it could also kind of bring up um you know like maybe restrictions that other people are having um that you're connecting with or that you're having um and so yeah just watch out for that on the 19th we are going to have the solar eclipse in the sign of aries and so this is going to be the start of eclipse season it's going to be a major new beginning a major new energy major new turning point in terms of our ninth house of faith belief system higher education travel you know that belief in ourselves that that self-leadership and and all of that so this is going to be a massive new beginning here um this could be you know this could really be a month where we really see like okay I know the career goals I want to reach, but what do I have to learn? What's the journey I have to go through? What's the route or the path I have to take to get there? And I feel like this month is going to shine a massive light on that. And it's going to, that solar eclipse in uh, Aries is also going to give us a glimpse of what's to come when the North Node moves into Aries later this year in the summer. And so it's kind of giving us a preview of like, hey, like this is the route or this is the path or this is the educational pursuit that you need to acquire to get to this goal or this career goal or this position or whatever right like um or this is where you need to travel to or this is what you need to study or this is this is what you need to cultivate more of that this is the faith you need to have right like something like that is going to come in i believe for a lot of leo risings around the 19th or 20th with that solar eclipse in aries and moving forward so then on the 21st the sun is going to enter the sign of taurus and it's going to square Pluto as soon as it does. And then also Mercury is going to go retrograde on the 21st. So right around the 21st, things are going to slow down a little bit. And we are also going to have a massive shift in focus um, from our belief systems and all of that. Like that's still going to be underlying a little bit, but we're also going to be like, okay, where am I going? What are, what's the goal? You know, our focus is going to shift to this massive spotlight in terms of our career and our long-term goals and achievements and where we're going in life like what are we doing where are we going what do we want to do in the world you know all of that so and mercury is going to retrograde here which means we're really going to be reflecting on that and really getting clear about that by the end of the month and so but when the sun moves in on the 21st it's going to square pluto and our seventh and so this could be a time where maybe your partner is going through uh you know a shift in focus to their career in some way or there you know there's a there could be kind of like a little bit of a challenge in terms of partnerships and people in your life versus the direction that you're wanting to focus on or go in or the spotlight that is being kind of put on career in your life in some way and so uh do just kind of watch for that towards the end of the month um it's not going to be the worst transit in the world but it is going to bring up some depth or intensity or you know kind of deeper things that may need to be revealed in terms of partnership future career achievements things like that so let me know down below leo if any of this resonated if you could see any of this happening for you in the month of april i'd love 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 to hear your feedback and what you guys have to say as always thank you guys so so much for watching this video and i will see you guys in the next one Alrighty, Virgo Risings, welcome to your April, I <laughs> said March, April 2023 astrology horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing well. 
So March is a really big month because we are starting eclipse season. And so this is like a really big deal, a really big turning point for all of us in some area of our lives, a really big new beginning, a lot of clarity, a lot of newness, and a really big turning point. And so the first half of the month, Virgo, is going to be really, really focused around your finances, especially shared finances and resources with other people, money owed to you or money that you owe, any debt you know, and really just taking charge of your finances and really seeing where maybe you have a lack of belief in yourself in terms of, you know, your finances and in terms of stepping up and taking the lead and getting into that leadership role regarding, you know, your finances and all of that. But it's also a very transformational time because the eighth house is a very transformative space. It's a very deep space. And so it's really kind of taking us down to the roots of things and taking us down to, you know, some kind of change, right? And so this month could bring a lot of change in your life. You could kind of come out of this month like, holy shit, you know, like there's been a lot that's changed that ends up really changing your perspective on things because so much changes, you know, with you. Now, this could also be a time where you are really being kind of shown, you know, the kind of people that you connect with and how to protect your energy around certain people, um, certain friends, certain social events or, uh, you know, social dynamics with other people, groups of people, um, hopes and aspirations as well could kind of play into this too. So let's go ahead and start. So on the first, Mars is in your 11th house of Cancer and it's going to trine Saturn in your 7th house. So this is really positive for relationships, for your social life, and really kind of showing you what it is that you desire, what it is that you want, and what it is that you want to nurture in terms of your relationships and connections and um, your partner, etc. So this is a really great time where you could be feeling a lot of endurance, a lot of perseverance towards certain aspirations or goals. Uh, in terms of partnerships, in terms of other people, in terms of relationships, and uh, showing you like where you want to kind of take charge more on those goals or to kind of like stabilize certain relationships or connections in your life more. So on the fifth, we are going to have a full moon in Libra in your second house. And so this is going to reveal something to you about what needs to be balanced out in terms of your finances, in terms of your money, in terms of your income, in terms of your resources, your assets, and your priorities, and what's important to you, and where you need to kind of rebalance that out or find the middle ground between compromise and, you know, doing what you need to do for you, basically. Like, and so that's something that's really going to come up around the 5th or even a few days before uh, for this full moon in Libra. So on the 11th, the sun in Aries is going to conjunct Jupiter in Aries. And so this could be a really positive, beneficial time for you that brings in maybe some success or hope or good news or, you know, something beneficial in terms of your financial life or in terms of, you know, shared resources, finances that you have with other people, debt, money owed, taxes, things like that. So, um, you know, this could be like a great time where maybe you get your tax return or uh, you find out that you are owed way more than you originally thought you were or you have an opportunity to finally like pay something off, you know, like something like that. Or it gives you a new perspective on, you know, your financial situation and on your deeper connections and you know, contractual connections with others that allows you to feel like you can achieve something or that you can believe in yourself when it comes to this situation. So watch out for that around the 11th. And then also on the 11th, Venus is going to enter Gemini. And so she's going to enter your 10th house of your career, your goals, your public image, your future achievements, where you're going in life and the life that you really want to build and have for yourself. And so this could definitely be a time where you start noticing from the 11th until the rest of the month that, you know, you are, you have certain desires again when it comes to your future, when it comes to the direction you want to go in your life, you know, where you want to go in your life, things like that. Maybe some skills that you want to learn or um, a new position that you want to go for in terms of your career um, or rebranding yourself or your career or your business in some way if you own your own business, you know, things like this could really come up from the 11th onwards. So on the 15th, Venus and Gemini will briefly square Saturn in Pisces though in your 7th. And so there could be some tension here or, uh, you know, something that feels a little stifled in terms of your relationships. 
um, and your career or your future direction, you know, this, the things that you want for your life long term. And so it could feel like you're delayed or held back in some way because of certain people in your life or because of a relationship in some way uh, right around the 15th. So do watch out for that. And then on the 19th or 20th, depending on where you are in the world, we're going to have the Aries solar eclipse happening in your eighth house. And so this is that major solar eclipse I was talking about, this big new beginning, big new turning point for you in terms of your finances, in terms of shared resources, you know, big life changes for you um, that can happen at this time that, you know, may seem a little bit out of your control, but I feel like they're for the better. They're pushing you in a new direction or like pushing you to, to take action or see something from a new angle and be more decisive in terms of, you know, what you want and what you're going after in terms of your financial life, in term of, terms of building wealth, in terms of, you know, assets and money that you share with other people um, that you may need to take action on or that you may need to look out for yourself with, right, in some way. And so I really like that solar eclipse for you. I think it's going to be a really like deep intense shift for you that is going to be very much needed so watch out for that around like the 20th and then on the 21st the sun is going to move into taurus and square pluto and mercury is going to go retrograde in taurus so then we're going to shift to taurus season and we're gonna the focus is going to shift around the 21st to more of educational pursuits travel your faith things that feel good, you know, like having a, a belief of ease and steadiness and, you know, taking things slow and fulfillment and like actually like enjoying life, you know, like these things are going to become very big for you as we shift into Taurus season and, um, you know, Mercury goes retrograde and all of that. And so you're really going to be reflecting on the beliefs that you have, uh, the faith that you have, travel, educational pursuits, teaching, mentorship, publishing, you know, things like this, um, you, you know, may meet people or have conversations with people that are, you know, outside of your comfort zone uh, in some way. And yeah, I think it's going to be a really interesting time of you really reflecting on what beliefs feel easy and natural and fulfilling to you and what kind of, what you kind of picture for your life, your vision for you know, how you want to live your life, like what gives you meaning and purpose in life, you know, it's going to be the big topic, I think, for the end of the month. And, um, but the sun is going to square Pluto as soon as it moves into Taurus briefly, uh, which is in your sixth house. And so this could be a time where, you know, you feel uh, this focus or this pull or this shift towards maybe traveling or getting more out of your life, getting more quality out of life in some way, right? Um, getting more beauty, more ease, more abundance, more fulfillment, um, you know, more pleasure out of life in some way. But maybe there is, you know, like something going on with work or this deep kind of uh, intense power struggle in terms of work or ethics or your belief systems and coworkers or responsibilities or tasks at work or even health in some way that is kind of at odds with this, you know, kind of desire to focus on your beliefs and travel and meaning and purpose and things like that. So anyways, that is what I'm seeing for you for the month of April Virgo. Let me know down below if any of this resonated or if you could see any of this resonating. I would really, really love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Libra Risings, uh, welcome to your April 2023 horoscope. April is a major, major, major month for you <laughs> because this is a month that is really going to call in your desires, your needs, your wants in terms of your relationships, the future of your relationships, where you're going in terms of your life, your goals, your, you know, the, your ambitions, the things that you want to achieve in this world and in this life, like your career, your long-term goals and achievements, and how that somehow impacts or affects your relationships in some way, or your partnership, your marriage in some way. It's also going to call into question, you know, if you are really being you in terms of your relationships and what needs to be balanced out, compromised, integrated, or where you need to stand your ground in terms of relationships. Um, it's also going to be a lot about towards the end of the month, your shared resources, finances, and things like that in terms of, you know, what you share uh, with other people, what you owe to other people, what other people owe to you, 
you know, things like that. So that is going to be the really, really big topics for the month of April for you. There's going to be a lot of really big but exciting change in terms of your relationship sector because the eclipse is coming. So eclipse season is starting. So yeah, so let's get into it. So the first of April, we have the first like kind of bigger transit happening. It's not like super big, but it's Mars in your 10th house of career, uh, you know, your, your public image, your reputation, where you're going in life, your long-term goals, your future, your bigger picture for your life and, and what you're trying to achieve in the world, right? So with Mars here, you're really going to be feeling ambitious and fired up and motivated to really take on a lot in terms of your career and go after your goals and go after the things that you really want while also protecting what you already have and conserving your energy and, you know, following any intuitive hunches that you have to really go after things in terms of your career, in terms of where you're going in life. And so th your direction in life right now is a really, really big focus for April. But anyway, so the first of April, Mars is going to trine Saturn uh, in your sixth house. So this is even more, giving you even more endurance to go after what you want in work, go after what you want in career, you know, like really start kind of paving this way uh, in terms of your career, in terms of what you want to do with work and your work in the world and how that affects the world and, and what you want to leave behind, your legacy, your long-term goals, your, you know, just your your work in this world, basically, like your direction in life, your long-term goals. And so it really will probably have something to do with your actual job or your actual work, you know, and you really seeing like how those two are uh, in sync or synergy or harmony with Mars trining Saturn, you know, that very first few days of April. So watch out for that. And then on the 5th, we're going to have the full moon in Libra. So it's going to be happening in your sign in the first house. So this is where you're really going to get <clears throat> uh, a lot of clarity on yourself and where maybe you need to get back to yourself. It's going to like kind of reveal to you what you need to embrace or integrate to come back into balance with who you are and your relationships and other people in your life. And so if you haven't been feeling quite like yourself or there's been a large focus on others too much or the relationship too much or the goals too much, then this is going to be a really refreshing time, a really refreshing full moon where it's like, oh, that's right. This is who I am or this is what I'm missing or this is what I haven't been, you know, I haven't been embracing this part of myself. And so this full moon is really going to come in and kind of show you that. So I think it's going to be really beneficial for you. So then on the 11th, the sun uh, is going to join Jupiter in the sky in Aries in your seventh house. And so this is going to be a really positive transit showing you a lot of benefic, successful, opportunistic, uh, growth, expansive oriented energy uh, in terms of your relationships or your partner. Um, so this could also be that like maybe someone in your life or your partner, the person you're in a relationship with uh, has some really good news come in or has an opportunity or is feeling very great, feeling very like uh, motivated and looking at like the bigger picture and all of that. And so this could be really great for them or it could be great for your relationship in general, right? And so um, I really like that energy. And then also on the 11th, your ruling planet of Venus is going to enter Gemini, uh, which is your ninth house sector. So you may start finding that you have more interest or you're being more pulled towards learning pursuits, towards, you know, things go like the bigger picture of something, you know, um, to learning new things, educational pursuits, travel, you know, talking to different people about different subjects and, and things like that. So that could definitely be something that starts coming in for you um, around the 11th as well. So on the 15th, though, Venus is going to square uh, Saturn in your sixth house. And so this could bring up some issues between something that maybe you're wanting to study or learn or do in terms of, you know, um, your beliefs or uh, education or travel. It's like maybe you want to take a trip or travel or something, but your work is like, no, sorry, like you, you don't have any vacation time left or we can't let you off for that week or you have too many responsibilities at work or something like that. And so there is a little bit of that around the 15th, um, could be a few days before as well, where it's like something that you're wanting to do to really get out of your comfort zone or to really explore or learn or something that you're interested in is kind of being held back in some way by work or health or your day-to-day -day routines, responsibilities, and tasks. And so that's kind of what I see there with that. Um, on the 19th, though, is when we have this solar eclipse in Aries in your seventh house. So this is that really massive new beginning turning point for you coming in to do with your relationships, your partnerships, the other people in your life. And so this could be a really big new beginning happening in terms of your relationships 
or like a big reset kind of happening in terms of your relationships that's really kind of you know motivating you or your partner um, it could also deal with like again like your your actual partner the person that you're in a relationship with where they have some you know big new beginning or turning point happening in their life but it's really going to be a very motivating energy a uh, very motivating direct like let's go let's do it kind of energy that's coming in on the 19th to 20th depending on where you are in the world but yeah that's going to start this massive new cycle this massive massive ripple ripple effect um, and it's going to be a preview of the north node moving into aries as well a few months down the line here in 2023 so i uh, definitely pay attention around that solar eclipse to what happens so on the 21st the sun is going to move into taurus so taurus season will begin but it will square Pluto in your fifth, and then Mercury will also go retrograde on the 21st in Taurus. So right around that time, around the 21st, things are going to shift a little bit and slow down a little bit because um, we're going to be moving from Aries season to Taurus season. Taurus season is a lot more slow. It's a lot more about like stopping and smelling the roses and enjoying things and feeling good. And um, this is your eighth house, and so this is a very transformational house for you. Um, and it also deals with finances, resources, and money that you share with other people or that you owe to other people or that other people owe to you. And so this definitely could be a transformational time that starts kind of happening or slowly happening. Um, but with the sun squaring Pluto right as it enters in your fifth house, this could definitely be something that maybe comes up financially to do with, you know, your children if you have children or to do with certain interests that you have or certain hobbies that you have or dating or um, friends or something like that that kind of come up and that you have to kind of take a look at in some way or that kind of challenge something that you want to focus on or something that you want to do. It's like, oh, I wanted to, to do this financially, but now I can't because of X, right? Or um, something happened that was kind of out of my control and now I have to do X, right? So something like that could kind of happen. I don't think it's anything too crazy or too big, um, but that could happen right around the 21st. And then also, like I said, Mercury will go retrograde. So whatever happens there, I think is going to also trigger this kind of reflection period of where you are financially, especially in terms of, you know, other people's money or your money and other people's money and how you guys share things or whatever shared resources debt. you know, there's going to be a lot of reflection on those kinds of things here, money that's owed to you, money that you owe to other people and what needs to kind of change in this area, right? So, and that's kind of how we're ending the month, right? Um, because you're really going to be focused on like wanting more quality over quantity in some way, whether in your business or whether financially with your investments um, in some way. And so, you know, there may be something that you're kind of going back on and reflecting on revisiting there with that Mercury retrograde at the end of the month. So let me know down below, Libra, if this resonated, if you could see these different things happening for you in the month of April. I would love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Scorpio Risings, welcome to your April 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing well. So April 2023 is a really big month. We are entering into eclipse season. So some really faded and karmic things are going to start happening and shaking things up and, and giving us um, a really brand new new beginning and some big turning points, right? So it's going to be a really exciting month ahead. I think it looks pretty positive in my opinion overall. Um, so I really feel like for you, Scorpio, this is a month where you are really doing some soul searching in terms of your job, your work, your day to day task and routines, your day to day responsibilities, how you show up to those. Um, if you believe in yourself in terms of those things, your confidence and your ambition towards those things, your passion towards those things. And, you know, just like your day to day work and health and things like that and, and how you're taking action there. Right. And I'm saying this because Mars is now in your ninth house. And so um, you are kind of going on this journey, this, this, this journey of educating yourself more or wanting to learn more, maybe wanting to travel. Maybe you get the opportunity to kind of travel for work or take some time off work to travel in some way um, this month. It would definitely be a, a good month for that. But it's like you are rediscovering things or trying to discover new things. And somehow this relates back to your job or your day-to-day -day work, your day-to-day -day task, your routines, your health. And uh, yeah, so it's, it's a very interesting time. And then towards the end of the month, the last half of the month, there will be a massive focus shift for you towards your relationships and, you know, your, your partnerships, your marriage, the people in your life, etc. So let's go ahead and get into it. So we start off the month with 
Mars in Cancer in your ninth house, trining Saturn in your fifth house. And so there definitely seems to be some kind of pursuit that you may be on that may be somewhat fun and uh, you know exciting or that may bring you a lot of passion or that you may love in some way or that may be giving you a lot of joy in some way. Um, where you are maybe traveling or educating yourself on something or learning something new or like discovering some sense of purpose or meaning in your life um, again. And so I really like that for you on the 1st of April. And then on the 5th of April, we're going to have the full moon happening in Libra in your 12th house. And so this is going to be a time where you are really kind of you know, seeing and, and this full moon may really reveal to you some, some habits or some subconscious habits or patterns that uh, you may need to let go of or some old things that may need to be integrated or let go of or released in order for you to, you know, have more energy or do better in your day-to-day -day life in some way or do better at your job. It may create that determination that you need in your work life again. And so, yeah, so I definitely feel like that's going to be coming for you. So then on the 11th, the sun will join Jupiter in your sixth house of work, health, day-to-day -day routines and tasks and responsibilities. So this could definitely be a time where there's a higher perspective coming in, there's an opportunity coming in, maybe a new job, a new position opening up, um, you know, like where you are finally maybe seeing some results or, you know, some success with some of the things that you've been working on in some way. Um, this could also be like maybe a new perspective shift coming in with your job or with your day-to-day -day life or routines or health. You're learning something new maybe or there's new like ethics or beliefs or morals or values coming in here in terms of these things as well. So definitely watch out for that on the 11th. And then also on the 11th, Venus is going to enter Gemini. Uh, which is your eighth house sector. And so this is definitely going to be a time where you could see more of a pull or find more pleasure in or more interest in finances, um, income, investments, other people's money, working with other people's money more in some way, um, dealing, you know, compromising and dealing with, you know, uh, shared resources or finances in some way. So that's something else that's happening on the 11th. So on the 15th though, Venus in Gemini in your eighth will square Saturn in Pisces in your fifth. And so this could be a time where, you know, maybe there's something that you're wanting to do. Maybe there's an investment that you're wanting to make, or there's something that you're wanting to do financially or something that you're wanting to change or that you're interested in. But Saturn in your fifth is maybe like, eh, maybe not right now, or maybe not so much, or it's may not, it may be holding you back in some way. So this could be, you know, something to do with children. This could be something to do with, you know, like something that, something else that you want that you would rather wait for, um, you know, and, and be more careful about in some way. Um, so kind of watch out for that on the 15th. So. On the 19th or 20th, depending on where you are in the world, we are going to have the solar eclipse in Aries, which is in your sixth house, again, of day-to-day -day work and routines and health. And so this is going to be a really big, powerful eclipse, bringing in a lot of newness, a lot of new beginnings and major turning points and shifts that can really be very motivating for you. That could just can be like a time where you're just feeling super called to just do something that you've been wanting to do or some kind of new energy comes in that propels you, that motivates you to do something new in some way with your job or with your work or in, in some kind of new beginning is happening, some kind of big new chapter is starting here. And it's kind of giving you a glimpse of what's to come when the North Node enters Aries later this year in the summer. So pay attention around that time to whatever comes up. So on the 21st, the sun is going to enter into Taurus, which is your seventh house of relationships and other people, but it's going to square Pluto in your fourth house. And so this could be a time where there is some change happening in terms of your home life, your family, your personal life versus your relationship life or the other person that you're in a relationship. Maybe they're going through something, right? Like, but there could definitely be some kind of change, power struggle, or something that's a little bit out of your control that happens here around the 21st um, to do with relationships and home or family life. So kind of watch out for that. It's not like, you know, the worst transit in the world, but there could definitely be something where, um, you know, that that's a little bit intense or that's transformational or that's a change, you know, that you're trying, that you're, having to go through uh, in some way um, with a partner or with another person in your life. Um, on the 21st um, as well, Mercury is going to then go retrograde. So that tells me that whatever happens on this day 
um, there's definitely gonna be a lot of like reflecting going on after that. Like, okay, so what do I want? What's of value to me here? What's gonna bring me the most fulfillment? Like, how can we slow down and really process this, deal with this, reflect on this? And so there is like the end of the month is bringing a little bit of reflection and change and um, really picking out what's of value and what you really desire, what's gonna really fulfill you and bring you more pleasure and peace and ease into your life in terms of relationships. Um, and like I said, that could tie into family, home, personal, past, life as well. So just kind of be aware of that. And it could also tie into, um, again, shared finances and resources because Venus will be, Venus is the ruler of Taurus and she's in your eighth. And so, um, so yeah, so let me know what happens down below. Scorpio, I'd love to hear from you. Did this relate? Could you see these things happening and relating? I'd really, really love to know and hear your feedback. And I will see you guys in my next one. Bye. Alrighty, Sagittarius, welcome to your April 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. So April for you, Sag, appears to be a month of a lot of really fun and exciting things, honestly. I really feel like this is a month that is really reconnecting you to your heart, reconnecting you to what you desire, reconnecting you to fun, play, what you really want out of life, like what really brings you a sense of joy, entertainment, you know, doing things that really light you up and bring that spark like that that really create that spark within you again um there could also be a focus on like children and romance and dating and sexuality and things like that as well um so that could also be something and then towards the end of the month the focus is going to shift more towards your work life your day-to-day -day routines and uh, your day-to-day -day tasks and responsibilities and how that somehow impacts or interferes with your relationship. So let's go ahead and get into it. So when we start off the month, we're gonna have Mars and Cancer in your eighth. So this is, can be a very powerful and impactful time with Mars moving through your eighth where you're going through a lot of change and it can also bring up changes in terms of, you know, investments, finances, any resources or finances or assets that you share with another person, money that's owed to you, money that you owe to other people, or just deep transformational change in your life that's really changing um, who you are and the perspective of that you have on things in some way. So it also be a, lot, a time where you're having a lot of focus or a lot of energy towards um, business related things or you know something like that, business ventures or financial you know, financial topics, things like that. But Mars is going to try and Saturn the very first of April in your fourth house. And so this is bringing in not only the financial aspect and the change aspect, but also home, family, your foundation, your personal life. But this is a really positive aspect. And so it's like, you may have this like vision that you're getting very serious about for what you want in long term in terms of your home and family life, what you want in terms of your personal life, your foundation, the foundations that you wanna lay. But not only that, how to actually take action on and go after what you want for the sake of your family or for the sake of protecting what you have or protecting what you own or, you know, um, building this foundation or going after these long term goals that you desire. Right. And so that's how we kind of start April. So then on the 5th, we're going to have a full moon in the sign of uh, Libra which is your 11th house sector uh, of groups, other people, marketing, networking, you know, collaborations, um, anything to do with kind of like-minded people that share the same values, vision, or goals that you do. Um, so this Libra full moon could be, uh, bring up a lot of social aspects into your life, a lot of topics involving, um, you know, social aspects, social dynamics, things like that, also hopes and aspirations. So this could be a time of like really rebalancing, like, okay, you have all these passions, but like, what's your audience for those passions or who shares those passions with you? Or, uh, you know, who do you want to share those passions with? Who do you want to share your heart with? Like what, what, you know, like maybe kind of like finding people to network with that share these same passions or something, right? So that Libra full moon could bring up that around the fifth. And then on the 11th, we're going to have the sun conjunct Jupiter in your fifth house, again, <laughs> of fun, romance, pleasure, play, you know, entertainment, like anything that brings you joy, happiness, and anything that your heart desires, right? And so this is going to be a really expansive time where maybe you're working on things that you love more, you know, focusing on your passions more. Um, maybe you're doing inner child healing or inner child work and you're, you know, having like a lot of success or expansion or opportunity with that in some way. So I really, really like that for you. 
Um, it could be like you're working on a passion project for your home or you are working on something that you just love to do that's like really bringing you back to a sense of who you are and what you desire and what you want, you know? And so, yeah, I, I really think, and this could also be like good news involving children, good news involving dating, romance, things like that, or um, maybe something really fun and expansive that you're doing or, uh, you know, something like that, that, that your heart really desires or that you like really want to do. So anyways, also on the 11th, Venus is going to enter Gemini, which is your seventh house of relationships. So there is going to start being more of a focus on relationships for you again <laughs> um, for the, you know, for the rest of the month after the 11th. But Venus in your seventh house, I think, is going to really harmonize a lot of the changes or, you know, turbulence that Mars brought up in your seventh house of relationships. You know, we've had a lot of changes, turbulence, maybe stress or conflict coming up in terms of relationships since August of last year. So Venus now moving into your seventh is going to synergize that. It's going to harmonize some of that and, you know, uh, make you feel better about it, really, <laughs> basically. Um, you know, maybe there's going to be some reconciliation or maybe there's going to be um, more of a ease with it. You know, it's going to kind of... Um, soften those edges, you know, in terms of relationships. So on the 15th, Venus is going to square Saturn in your fourth house on the 15th. So this could bring up some difficulty in terms of relationships and home, family, personal life or past in some way. It's like, you know, you are getting very serious here in terms of home, family, what you want out of that, your vision, and maybe like, you know, a relationship in your life or someone that you're seeing uh, maybe it doesn't share that same vision all the way or maybe there's some kind of like you're not on the same page about something and so that could happen around the 15th so kind of just watch out for that it's not like the biggest thing in the world but it's a little bit of like a, a disagreement to you know to some extent or just something not really clicking uh, in terms of relationships or home and family or feeling a little bit stifled in some way so on the 19th or the 20th depending on where you are in the world we have the solar eclipse in aries and so eclipse season is starting this is a big new beginning a big new faded karmic shift in our lives for you again this is happening in your house of passion and fun and children and play and sexuality and dating and joy and happiness and all the things right and so this is a big new beginning coming in here that that is really like bringing a turning point in this area of your life for you so watch out for that um, it's also giving you a preview of what's to come when the north node enters aries you know like you're going to be really focused on your passions and what you love and what's good for you, you know, and uh, what brings you a sense of passion and desire and motivation, like what, what brings that, that spark in you, you know. So then on the 21st, the sun will move into Taurus in your sixth house of work, health and day to day routines and tasks and responsibilities, but it will square Pluto in your third. And so there could be something coming up here uh, between like your environment, your errands, etc. Something that's kind of out of your control and your schedule um, that is like somehow in conflict with what you're trying to focus on or what you're trying to do with your job, with your work, your day to day responsibilities or task or health in some way. Um, and then Mercury is going to go retrograde on the 21st. Um, as well in your sixth house. So this could spark some kind of like reflection period that begins to happen on your job, on your work, on your health, um, on, you know, your day-to-day -day task and day-to-day -day responsibilities and how to bring in more ease, softness, like how to slow down and bring in more presence and um, fulfillment and quality and value in this area of your life in terms of work, in terms of health, in terms of, um, you know, like the, the different tasks and responsibilities and duties that you have on a day-to-day -day basis. So that is what I'm seeing for you, Sagittarius. Let me know down below if this relates or what ends up happening for you this month. I would really, really love to feel, uh, not feel your feedback, but hear your feedback. Please let me know down below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Capricorn rising. Welcome to your April, 2023 astrology horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing fabulous. So April is a month for you that is really focused on your personal life, your home life, your foundation. It is about a lot of really big new beginnings and turning points in terms of what is going on with your home and family, what is going on behind the scene, and what is going on in terms of your personal relationships to your intimate connections 
relationships with other people. And so that is going to be the really big focus for April. But towards the end of the month, it's going to shift a little bit and become more about what you do for pleasure, how you unwind, what literally just sets you on fire in a good way, in a restful way, in a uh, rejuvenating way. It's going to be a lot about rejuvenation. The uh, last part of the month as things start moving into Taurus, which is your fifth house. And so you're going to be really focused towards the end of the month on really finding that sense of pleasure, joy, fulfillment, and ease within your life again. And so let's go ahead and get started on the details. So the very first of April, we actually are going to have an aspect between Mars and your seventh house of Cancer who recently moved in there. So there is like a, a massive shift and drive and energy coming in where a lot of your energy is going towards your relationships. Or if you are with a partner, if you're in a committed relationship, they could be going through a lot of changes, feeling very motivated or doing a lot of things. There could be a lot coming up in terms of relationships or maybe some changes in terms of relationships or just the other close and intimate connections within your life. Um, but there's going to be an aspect between Mars and Saturn. Saturn's in your third, Mars is in your seventh. So this could definitely bring up, um, you know, some communication within partnerships, within relationships, maybe some something to do with your environment um, and your relationships or, you know, really <clears throat> kind of getting serious or settling down in terms of where you wanna go or what you wanna do in terms of relationships. I have a blanket on because it is freezing uh, in, my, <laughs> in my house right now. It like just is not getting warm. Um, this is not a real fireplace either, by the way. I just put that on for, you know, background effects. But anyway, so yeah, so the first part of month, March, April, if I could talk, you're going to be feeling a lot of endurance in terms of your relationships. There may be some short-term travels or some events. Um, I really like this Mars-Saturn trine. Um, it's going to be really giving you a lot of endurance and perseverance and staying power to make some changes or go after something. Um, so on the 5th, we're going to have a full moon in the sign of Libra, which is your 10th house of career, your long-term focus, your long-term goals, your long-term achievements, like where you're going in your life. What is your big picture for your life? And, and what does that entail? Like, where do you want your life to go? And so the uh, full moon is going to be there. So this could be revealing something to you in terms of your career, in terms of your life direction that you need to integrate or embrace to come back into balance, especially within your home and family life as well. And so in your personal life. And so it's kind of like private life versus public life and family and home stuff versus career goals. And so there could be something that is revealed to you or something that comes to the surface that ends up helping you integrate these two areas of life or do something to almost help your home, family, personal life foundation, etc. cetera, um, with this full moon. So on the 11th, we're gonna have the sun conjunct Jupiter also in your fourth house of home, family, your personal life. And so there's just a lot of like healing and big new beginnings, big new changes happening in your home, personal life, family. Could be bringing up some things from the past too, could be reminiscing a lot or finally kind of completing certain cycles from the past or finally like letting go of something from the past or asserting yourself more or taking more action, being more decisive in terms of private life matters that you've maybe been dealing with. And so with this Sun-Jupiter conjunction on the 11th is really, really benefic. It is really positive. And so it could definitely show you a new potential or a new vision, or you could be feeling very enthusiastic, or there could be an opportunity that comes in in terms of buying a home or real estate or family or, you know, anything to do with your home, family, and foundation. Like there definitely can be a broader perspective that comes in for you or some kind of success or some kind of opportunity or growth that happens there. So then also on the 11th, Venus is going to enter into Gemini, which is your sixth house of work, health, and day-to-day -day routines and tasks. And so um, there is going to be a little bit more of a interest in those things, or you're going to be wanting to find more pleasurable ways of doing those things um, over the next several weeks with Venus and Gemini. So on the 15th, though, Venus and Gemini will square Saturn and Pisces. And so this can bring in a little bit of difficulty in terms of maybe something going on in your environment or something going on around you or with errands that you have to run, responsibilities that you have in your day-to-day -day life versus things that you're wanting to do or explore or shift or change um, out of a place of pleasure in your 
health, career, or not career, sorry, work, <laughs> work. I mean, it could be your career. It, it actually could be your career as well because Venus rules your 10th house. But um, <clears throat> your day-to-day -day tasks and responsibilities, it's like you're, you know, maybe wanting to go to the gym or something, but you find out that, oh, wait, like, you know, the area that I live in doesn't have a gym nearby or something, you know, like something like that. It's like something environmental or something going on in your day-to-day -day life that is somehow conflicting with your wants or desires in terms of work, health, and daily routine around the 15th. It's nothing too crazy though, but it is a little bit of a difficult aspect. So then on the 19th or 20th, depending on where you are in the world, we are finally going to have our first eclipse of this year. It is going to be a solar eclipse, a new moon solar eclipse in the sign of Aries. Again, your fourth house, your private life, your home life, your foundation, your family, your parents, your past. So this is going to be a really big new beginning that's going to ripple for the next several months. And it's going to give you a preview of what's to come when the North Node moves into Aries as well. But it's going to be a pretty big new beginning and turning point for you with your home life, your family, personal life, private life, foundation, things like that. So uh, watch out for that around that time. So then on the 21st, we have a couple things happening. The sun is going to enter Taurus. So Taurus season is going to start, but it's going to square Pluto and Aquarius in your second house. And so there will be the shift towards things that you enjoy, like relaxing more, doing more things that bring you a sense of joy and enjoyment and fulfillment, enjoying the finer things in life, so to say, stopping and smelling the roses and like just embracing the beauty of life and the things that you love and the things that make you feel good. But um, like I said, the sun will square Pluto when it first moves in. And so this could bring some kind of intense change in terms of your resources or money or finances or support or assets in some way. And so it's like, you know, there is something here that could be kind of out of your control. And but you're also wanting to like enjoy life and slow down and and lean more into ease. But maybe you're worried that that may cause some kind of chaos or um, there's some fear there financially in some way. So we also will have Mercury going retrograde around the 21st in Taurus as well. So whatever this, you know, whatever comes up here with that Pluto, you know, sun square um, is also going to kind of cause a reflection period or a revisitation period where you are really like reflecting on and processing what it is that really does bring you a sense of ease and fulfillment and joy and love and harmony and peace and and um you know pleasure in your life you know like how can you slow down and lean into the more beautiful uh feel good sides of life right and um you know mercury retrograding there is going to really have you rethinking these things rethinking what you love rethinking um the things that bring you joy rethinking your passions rethinking what it is that you know your your heart really desires and so Anyway, so that is what's happening this month, Capricorn. Let me know down below if any of this resonates, if you could see any of this happening. I would really, really love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Make sure to comment down below if you would like to see uh, monthly horoscopes for now on. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Aquarius Risings, welcome to your April 2023 astrology horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing fabulous and let's go ahead and get into it. So April is a really big month full of major new beginnings, major changes, major turning points. And so I'm really excited for it. But for you, Aquarius, this month is going to be a lot about speaking up, making decisions, speaking your truth, you know, really kind of asserting yourself more, especially in your day-to-day -day interactions and the day-to-day -day situations in which you find yourself in. And so it's also going to be very much about maybe getting out more, exploring your environment more, you know, doing things more, taking more action in terms of your day-to-day -day life and really kind of focus more on your environment and your day-to-day -day life, what's going on around you. And uh, yeah, so, and then as we get to the kind of other half of the month, the like, you know, final half of the month, the focus is going to shift a little bit more internally and you're going to be a lot more focused on like, you know, finding rest and pleasure and ease and slowing down in terms of your home and family life and your personal life and, you know, kind of finding that inward vibe, right? And so... So let's go ahead and get into it. So we start off the month with Mars in Cancer, finally, in your sixth house. So there's going to be a lot of drive, a lot of focus, maybe even some change, a lot of passion. 
and a lot of your energy going towards your job, your work life, your day-to-day -day tasks, your day-to-day -day routines, your day-to-day -day responsibilities, getting things done, getting things organized, doing what you have to do to keep up, right? Like focusing on your lifestyle, focusing on, you know, even your, your health, your fitness, things like that could definitely come up. Um, as we're entering into April and really all throughout April as Mars is going to continue to transit your sixth house. But Mars is going to try and Saturn on the 1st of April, which is in your second house. And so this is giving you a lot of momentum, a lot of endurance and a lot of perseverance to move forward towards a bigger goal that you have maybe financially or in terms of your resources or assets by working and getting things done on a day to day basis and doing what you need to do. Um, or you're going to be, you know, really working towards a certain value or priority that you have health wise as well. That could be it as well. So that's basically how we start the month, really kind of positive momentum starting the month out. And then on the fifth, we're going to have a full moon in the sign of Libra, which is your ninth house of higher education, travel, things going on in the world, your, your belief systems, your political views, your religious views, your spiritual views, your philosophical views. And, uh, you know, things that are also really out of your comfort zone as well, uh, which is why it rules education and travel, things that give you like a higher perspective on life. And so this full moon happening here is like, hey, you may need to integrate some other viewpoints into your into your day to day life, into your normal perspective, um, because this could actually really help you grow and expand on a smaller level. It's like bringing in the macro viewpoint to the, you know, micro viewpoint, if that makes sense. Like giving you a macro perspective that somehow integrates into your micro perspective of your day-to-day -day life and the things that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis and how you view things and what you know on a day-to-day -day basis. And so um, this could also bring up topics of education, you know, mentorship, teaching, travel, and things like that as well. And so, yeah, so that's gonna happen on the 5th. And then on the 11th, we're going to have this sun conjunct Jupiter. And so this really looks like, you know, you're maybe learning something new or taking action on something new around you. Maybe you're learning a new skill or you're just seeing a higher viewpoint than you normally do. Um, the, this first part of April, it's like you're you may even get, you know, opportunities maybe coming to you easily. You may be very busy or a lot of people wanting to to kind of talk with you or, um, you know, kind of get your attention in some way. Uh, you may have success with something or, um, yeah, I, I just feel like opportunities are going to come very, very easy to you in a lot of different ways by you really interacting with what's going on around you and your immediate environment. Um, you know, you could be going and visiting places around you a little bit more, going out a little bit more, like kind of just, you know, pioneering around different, you know, your your immediate environment a little bit more. And so uh, that's going to happen on the 11th with the Sun-Jupiter conjunction. It could also be something that you're learning or a learning interest or learning pursuit um, that really just brings in um, a lot of opportunity or a lot of potential for you. And then on the 11th as well, we're going to have Venus entering into Gemini, which is your fifth house, which also tells me, you know, there's going to be kind of this interest or desire or want to like learn more and, you know, uh, get back into maybe certain hobbies or passions or creative projects, um, things that you love to do that really like feel light and that, you know, give you a sense of enjoyment, right? So uh, that that's also going to be the case for a lot of you. And then on the 15th, though, Venus and Gemini will briefly square Saturn in Pisces in your second. And so this could be that maybe something that you're wanting to do that you really enjoy, that you're really interested in, that, that you know will bring you a lot of enjoyment and pleasure um, is somehow conflicting with your financial situation or your financial goals or your financial vision. And so there could be a little bit of uh, difficulty with that around the 15th. So then on the 19th, we're finally going to start eclipse season um, and we're going to have the solar eclipse happening in the sign of Aries, again, your third house sector, which is going to be a huge new beginning and a huge turning point for you. So this could be a whole new environment that you end up in, you know, maybe you decide to move or maybe you're taking a short trip. This could be a whole new turning point in your perspective or how your your per, your perception, how you view something in your life or how you view your reality. This could be a whole new learning endeavor or a big new beginning uh, with a new learning endeavor or, you know, something that you're doing on a day-to-day -day basis, the people, places, and things that you interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. 
uh, could really be coming up around this solar eclipse in Aries. And it could be really pushing you to take action on something that you want or take action on something that you desire. And for a lot of you, this could deal with your work, your, your job um, as well, because the ruler of Aries is Mars and Mars is in your sixth house. And so, you know, maybe that you know, you get an opportunity for a new job that you end up really loving and that you really put your all into, or maybe you uh, start, you, you get a promotion or something, or maybe you're able to start, you know, like learning a new skill uh, in some way. And so this really is a lot of just really beneficial energy around this time that's really kicking us into gear and helping us heal. And I really feel like it's helping you heal your throat chakra. It's helping you speak up for yourself. It's helping you be more direct with the decisions that you're making and what you know and expressing yourself as well. This is also a big self-expression kind of time too. So on the 21st, the sun will then move into Taurus, your fourth house, and we will also have Mercury going retrograde there. So the focus will shift from the 21st until the end of the month on your private life, your personal life, your family life, family matters, your home life, maybe even your past or your parents, you know, could be a topic that kind of, you know, pulls your attention or becomes, you know, kind of in the spotlight somehow. And so you may start realizing like, you know what, like, okay, like I've been really focused on what's going on around me and, you know, just doing different things, getting out and taking a lot of action and work and all of that. And now like, you know, there's a spotlight on creating more pleasure, rest, ease, simplifying things, um, you know, simplicity, slowing things down in terms of your private life or personal matters in some way, like maybe wanting to rest more or, you know, um, enjoy your, your time at home or enjoy your personal time more in some way. And that could mean like, you know, maybe you rearrange something or you redecorate or something, you know, um, or you start working on a creative project or a creative passion while you're at home, you know. Um, so it could be something like that. But on the 21st, the sun, as it moves into Taurus, is going to square Pluto, which is now in your sign, Aquarius. I talked a lot about that last month and overall in the 2023 horoscopes for the year. Um, but so this could be... Uh, a sign that there are some big changes um, on the horizon at the end of the month around the 21st coming in um, where you start really rethinking or reconsidering or thinking about changing or facing some fears in terms of your home, family, personal life situation in some way. Um, so because maybe you're feeling different. Maybe there's a change going on with you and you're like, you know, I want my home to be like my sanctuary or really reflect this deep change. Um, or it could be that, you know, Maybe there's like a family member that, you know, there's some kind of, you know, tension that arises there as well, um, you know, kind of like on the more worst case scenario side with, uh, you know, everything happening on the 21st. But overall, I feel like this month is going to be a very positive month and going to bring a lot of really positive action oriented momentum forward for us. So let me know what you think down below Aquarius. Let me know if this resonated for you. If you could see these things happening. Um, I would love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like this video and comment down below if you would like to see more monthly horoscopes and I will see you guys in the next one. Alrighty, Pisces, last but not least, welcome to your April 2023 horoscope for the month ahead. I hope you guys are doing amazing. So this month is a really big month because we are starting eclipse season and it is coming with a lot of major new beginnings and turning points for us. It's going to really propel us forward and really kick in the momentum. But then we end the month on a very different energy where things are going to kind of slow down and we're going to start kind of going back and reflecting um, on a certain area of our lives. And so it's going to be a very interesting month overall. I think it's going to be very positive. It's going to really jolt a lot of us forward in new directions. And so, um, yeah, so for you, Pisces, um, this month is a lot about your finances, your income, your assets, your resources, your priorities, the things that you value, the things that you need, you know, to be you, like the things that you really hold close and dear to you and that allow you to continue being you and living the lifestyle that you want to live that can go into income, that can go into, you know, the, the money that you make or the sources of income that you have you know, resources, assets, etc. So, um, yeah. So with that being said, we start off the month with Mars, uh, in your fifth house of love, enjoyment, romance, the things that you really take pleasure in, that you find fun, that you enjoy, 
um, and also it can rule over children and sexuality. But we have Mars in your fifth house trining Saturn in your first house. So it is going to bring in um, a really strong sense of endurance of going after the things that you love and getting very serious about what it is that you want, what it is that you desire, what it is that you want to take action on, what it is that you care about. You know, maybe taking some really uh, making some big moves in terms of family or children as well, since this is cancer, you know, and your fifth house, um, or towards dating and intimate connections, um, or just things that you really actually love that you really actually care about that bring you a sense of joy that bring you a sense of emotional uh, security within you, you know, and so that's kind of how we're starting the month. And then on the fifth, we're going to have a full moon in the sign of Libra which is your eighth house um, of finances, other people's finances, you know, shared resources, shared money, and deep profound change at times as well. And so, you know, this could be a rebalancing in your life financially uh, to some degree, like finding the middle ground or seeing a new option or seeing um, a way to compromise or negotiate or, um, you know, meet in the middle with some kind of financial you know, thing that's happening or, you know, something going on with another person that's going to be happening around the fifth. So then on the 11th, the sun and Jupiter are going to come into their conjunction in your second house of, again, your own money, your own resources, your own assets, your own priorities and things like that. And so this could definitely be a really beneficial and positive time that may bring in an opportunity for, for you to make more money or for another form of income, another stream of income, um, or you could be learning more about, you know, money or finances or, you know, make some, you know, kind of have like this higher perspective or make some big moves in terms of your money, your finances, your income, your, your assets, your priorities, you know, it's really showing you what is possible, I think, overall. And so that's going to be happening around the 11th. And then also on the 11th, Venus is going to move into Gemini, which is your fourth house. And so you're also going to be really focused on from the 11th forward, in some ways on what you want, what you find pleasurable and what you desire in terms of your home life, your family life, you know, your personal life, your private life, you know, this could be a great time to like redecorate, change some things around, do some spring cleaning in the, in the home and really add something that brings you more joy and pleasure into your home or into your family. Um, reconnect, you know, just have, you know, more pleasurable and positive experiences in that area of your life. So, so on the 15th, Venus and Gemini though will square Saturn in your sign. And so this could be that maybe something that you want or something that your family wants or something that, you know, is wanted <laughs> um, in the home and family sector is somehow not exactly what you feel is right or not exactly what you want or you feel somewhat um, rejected or neglected from doing it in some way or somehow detached from it in some way. You know, with Saturn in your sign, it's like you want to be more serious about it, but maybe, you know... Uh, someone else or the situation itself is not as serious as you would like it to be or it's making you feel uncomfortable or it's a difficult situation that feels a little stifling in some way um, so that could happen around the 15th it's not like the worst thing but it is a little bit more of an edgier transit so then on the 19th we will have the solar eclipse happening in the sign of Aries on the 19th or 20th depending on where you are again in your second house of your income resources assets you know money and uh your priorities you know what you own and so this solar eclipse happening here is going to be a massive new beginning a massive new turning point a big new energy that's going to ripple for several months and also be a preview of what's to come with the north when the north node moves into your second house of aries this summer and so this is going to be you really want to pay attention around that time i'm going to be doing a separate video on all that going into a lot more detail but for now, I can tell you it's just going to be a really big new beginning, a really big new turning point or change in terms of what you're going after in terms of your money, your income, your resources, what you want to own and, you know, how you're how you're going after that, how you're taking action on that. And so. All right. So on the 21st, we will have the sun entering the sign of Taurus. So Taurus season will begin. This is your third house where, you know, which is a big focus could be put on like self-expression, your environment, your immediate environment, maybe a short travel or, you know, the things that you do on a day to day basis or the people, places, things and situations you interact with on a day to day basis. 
could also have something to do with you learning more about something that you love, a creative project or um, something going on with, within the home and family as well and your environment um, or the town in which you live in, you know, with Venus being in your fourth. Um, but on that day that the sun moves into Taurus, it's also going to square Pluto in your 12th house. So this could definitely be like a need to get away or feeling a little bit like, um, like some things are out of your control in some way, or there could be a little bit of a power struggle here, or you could start seeing some fears, um, that you may have some subconscious fears that you may have in terms of maybe where you live or your environment or, um, things that are going on around you. Now, overall, this isn't like the worst aspect. It's nothing to like freak out about necessarily, but, um, yeah, it's something you want to watch out for around the 21st. And then also Mercury is going to go retrograde um, on the 21st as well. And so this is going to be a lot about from the 21st onward, like slowing down, stopping and being more present in your life, like stop and smell the roses, you know, like that whole saying is going to be so true for you, Pisces, from the 21st onward for a little bit, because it really is going to be about just enjoying and finding pleasure and ease and simplicity and, you know, um, just enjoyment in your day-to-day -day life and your day-to-day -day interactions and getting out of like, you know, some kind of internal chaos, maybe going out in nature, visiting different places around you and in your environment that uh, really kind of just feed you and, and help you to stay more present and more secure, more stable in the moment, right? And so that's what this is really, I think, going to be about for many of you, I think. So let me know down below, Pisces, if any of that resonates with you. I'd really, really love to hear your feedback. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.